What is up, ladies and gents? John Brown and Mason Dora here, and we have another video from you guys, for you guys, not from, from us. Um, we're going to talk about Edward Snowden today, and all the things that have been going on with him, the whole story, uh, the deep, real facts of what's going on. The media is kind of focusing on a lot of stupid stuff. So we're going to try to cover everything uh, relevant, important. And uh, we're trying to try to do it with factual information. We've got a bunch of lists of stuff here that we want to talk about. But uh, Mason here knows a lot more about it than I do. <laughs> I know the gist of it. I got the information here and I read over it, but he uh, went pretty in-depth with it. So, Mason, start us off. What's the word? All right. Uh, how's it going, Internet World? Um, yeah, basically, I just wanted to make this video about Edward Snowden. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he was an NSA information whistleblower. I uh, released some documents through WikiLeaks and also through a couple of newspapers, The Guardian and Washington Post, about uh, some of the things that the government uh, NSA program has been doing. Um, and basically, we just kind of wanted to create this video um, because we've seen some problems with how the news is covering it. It's it's pretty confusing to try and piece the whole spectrum of things together um, just by watching like CNN or Fox News. And uh, it's just really confusing to follow. Um, at least I think so anyway. It's a pretty interesting topic too. It's like this is the biggest leak that's ever happened in the history of America. Yeah. <clears throat> ever. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, Watergate was big, but I mean this is Oh this yeah. Is completely this is different way here. beyond that. Um and so I think the first thing I want to talk about this is uh kind of breaking news anyway. Um a couple of days ago, Obama said that he's considering uh ending the NSA surveillance program. And this is according to uh, Democratic Senator uh, Ron Wyden. And uh, basically, the administration has a feeling, and I mean, they're getting concerned about the bulk phone record collection. And I think basically they understand that it's wrong now that there's been a lot of backlash from citizens. And uh, like they're trying to pull this down. They're saying, oh, we're making a comeback by ending this and um it completely goes against you know what they said at first and how they were justifying their actions and how they were saying that what they were doing was right and they needed it for the war on terrorism yeah and, and they said it was legal they had legal precedent yeah. to do it which i mean the patriot act itself is it's in law apparently yeah. Yeah. but it's not actually constitutional so the patriot act itself is illegal so they're saying it's legal to do what they're doing based on this illegal law. Yes. That's yep. their justification yep. for it. And uh, the thing that I, I'm kind of curious about is even if, you know, they decide to get rid of the NSA or at least the information that's collected, you know, what's to stop them from creating a new program and doing the exact same thing yeah. under a name? They could shift it to the uh, Department of Homeland Security. Right, who just bought Whatever. six billion rounds of ammunition. <laughs> Yeah. which is ridiculous, seeing as their uh, largest purchase before this one ever was in 2010, and that was only 75 million rounds. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. And it's going to be used for training, apparently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that kinda, I'm kind of curious how all that's going to unfold with um, Obama attempting to get rid of the information gathering from the NSA. Um, another hot topic, something new in the news, uh, Edward Snowden has been nominated for a uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Oh, yep. um, a Swedish sociology professor uh, nominated Snowden for the Peace Prize. And something that's kind of kind of funny about this was Barack Obama actually received the Nobel Peace Prize in 2009. Um, so basically this professor, that was funny. From, yeah, this professor uh, from Sweden, this whole like rational thought behind um, nominating Edward Snowden for the Nobel Peace Prize was basically to correct the Nobel Committee's mistake for giving it to Obama in 2009. Is that what um, he said himself, or was it just like implied? Yeah, that was that was his in his official oh, wow. letter. Yeah, he. That's so a person on the board for the Nobel Peace Prize admitted that it was a mistake to give it to Obama. Oh, no, 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 no. The Swedish professor s nominated Snowden um, in hopes of correcting the mistake from the Nobel Committee. Oh, okay. Committee. Okay. Yeah. Um, Bradley okay. Manning has also received a nomination uh, for a Nobel Peace Prize. 
Um, so that'll be interesting. We have a couple whistleblowers, you know. Yeah, getting the peace prize, man. You can't Top deny tier. that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That gives a lot of credibility to what they're saying and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, he has um, a Nobel Peace Prize, but uh, he's going to Guantanamo Bay. Hmm. <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of crazy. Snowden's been holed up in Russia, you know, in a airport terminal yeah. for so long. Um, when he first broke the news about what the NSA had been doing, um, he was seeking asylum from 30 different countries. And uh, basically, he's just kind of trapped there. I think a lot of countries are afraid to take him in because they're afraid of, you know, what the U.S. government might do yeah, to them. Yeah, for sure. Or... If it's a small country, if they don't have vast resources at the hands or vast, right. like, defenses, lawyers, anything, you know, that could be used as a defense against America, right. they're not going to want to take him in. Yeah, and then you also have to put yourself in Snowden's shoes. Like, if you're holed up in that, you know, airport terminal, as soon as you step out of there, <laughs> you, you know, you could be arrested. Someone's going to grab you. The U.S. doesn't have <laughs> jurisdiction there, but it's not going to stop them. Yeah, you know? someone's going to grab you in a limo, dark limo. Or or wherever you land. Yeah. You know? Come with so us. So that's... <laughs> yeah. All right, you want to go over to uh, the timeline then? Yeah, we can go over some of the timeline. Uh, All right. Do you want to cover that or you want me to? Have at her. All right. So basically, uh, we just want to go through a basic timeline of everything that's happened with Edward Snowden um, because it's just it's just so hard to follow and, you know, watching TV, seeing clips and pieces and trying to put everything together. Um, so back in January of 2013. When did he leak it officially? His identity uh, was revealed in June 9th. So, okay. So that's like four or five months before the official leak happened. He's been uh, planning this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so anyways, back in January 2013, Edward Snowden sent a message to a uh, documentary producer um, suggesting that uh, they create a film about intelligence activities about the United States. Do you know if, when he was doing that, if he intended to release the information right then? Or was he just no, wanting to I, make a film? Nope, not, not clear on that. Okay. Um, but at least, you know, obviously he was showing some interest in it. He started thinking um, about it, it seems like, right, right then. I don't think right. he had a plan to... No, I mean, if he released the information, you know, not long after that. So, yeah. I mean, if I had to speculate, I would say that the documentary probably would have been about the leak. But, you know, that's just an assumption. Yeah. Um, so anyway, back after that, February 2013, uh, Snowden contacted Glenn Greenwald, a reporter at The Guardian, and Barton Gelman, a uh, contributor to The Washington Post, and he pitched a story on the secret programs. Um, and although the two journalists um, aren't aligned in their statements on the per or weren't aligned in the statements on the purpose of Snowden's initiative. It seems like at first, with these two... Th initial things he's trying to do like he just wants to let people know that there are secret programs he didn't even want to say like he, i think he was scared at first he didn't want to say all right i have nsa uh, leaks i have proof the nsa is uh you know watching american yeah. citizens it seems yeah. like at first he just wanted to uh let the people know there's information he's just kind of barely putting it out there like oh, i don't want to put myself on the line uh, i'll just do this this should be okay yeah put his toes in test the water yeah testing the water at first he's not going full yeah. in yet yeah, and then uh, in March 2013, uh, Snowden was living in Hawaii, received a job offer from Booz Allen Hamilton to work as an uh, infrastructure analyst uh, for the NSA. And uh, the company um, says that Snowden offered his services only for three months. Hmm. So, you know, that's kind of a uh, little sketchy there anyway. Um, and he signed a contract with the NSA to provide, you know, the IT on-site support. Um, and at that point, Snowden gained access to the NSA production premises, including a facility engaged in storing classified information, obviously, which was where he, um, you know, got the information that he leaked. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't even long after that. I mean, he was there in oh, March, wow. April. March, April, and then on May 20th, uh, he faked a medical condition um, and asked his employer for some days off to fly to Hong Kong, you know, and he took four laptops with him stored with classified information, um, 
and he left his girlfriend. <laughs> There's a, that, that was talked a lot about in the news. Um, and he told her nothing about his plans or his schedule or what he was planning on doing. And uh, so, I mean, at that point, he made the decision, like, I'm, you know, I'm going to do I'm gonna this. I'm going to do it. Right. And So you between... Know, he, between March and May, he started uh, gathering the information and then uh, made the decision that he's actually going to do it. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. insane. Yeah. yeah, just one second here. Uh, you want to cover the next point? Sure. So, okay. So he gained access to the NSA production premises, including facility and gauge storing. That's crazy. I wonder if he intended to get to that location so he could do that or if it just kind of happened. I'm not sure. But, okay. Um, so, yeah, May 20th, he pretends he has medical con medical condition and flies out to Hong Kong with his four laptops of information. And then June 1st, Laura Poitras, Poitras, Poitras arrived in Hong Kong from S New York to meet Snowden. And then uh, Glenn Greenwald and Ewan Macaskill, Macaskill from The Guardian meet at the same day, their source, at the same day, their source in a hotel somewhere in Kowloon. Stonen has a Rubik's Cube in hand as signal to reporters. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's crazy. So they all meet up in Hong Kong. Um, yeah. People from The Guardian go out there with them. They meet up, uh, have a little secret signal to meet up, and then they um, looks like they discuss the information, gives it yeah. all to them. Yeah, he released uh, they released a story on the Intelligence Surveillance Act, uh, or the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, I'm sorry, and uh, the prison program um, based on evidence provided by Snowden. Um, British newspaper published a classified court document that reveals Verizon's obligations to disclose communication logs referring to millions of its users' phone records. Um, the Washington Post confirms the NSA program with further reports that depicts how the secret USA government digital surveillance plan uh, actually worked. Um, so really interesting. They didn't just say, hey, uh, these companies, these businesses are doing that. They actually elaborated on how everything worked and okay. how it was done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I like to note that it says uh, Verizon's obligation to disclose communication logs. So they're obligated. They didn't have a choice, really. Their right. court demanded. <clears throat> yeah. And the I law, mean, some... the courts demanded that they give them the information. That's insane. Right. 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 And, uh, you know, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. And uh, the claim was um, that the U.S. agency has direct access to, you know, all of the central servers of Internet, of the Internet community companies, such as Google, Facebook, Apple. Yeah, um, they were involved, All too. the Internet giants. And um, the, there, I mean, there is some speculation. All the companies denied willingly or denied that they willingly allowed the U.S. government to receive uh, unauthorized access of the mm -hmm. data. Um, but, I mean, still, it's a pretty scary thing. Yeah, they had central services. Man, that's that's pretty much access to everything you'd ever want to know about what person's doing online. If they have access to Google servers, Facebook, that's like they know what you're searching. They know what you're searching for. Um, Facebook, they know who you're talking to, what you're talking about what kind of companies you like, what pages you like, what you're involved with. Yeah. They yeah. know, like one thing I heard that was kind of interesting is was that the, and because of having all this metadata, that they knew more about you than like even like sometimes your family does. They know if you're Googling like antidepressants or if you go, if you Google yeah. a phone number for a doctor, they yeah. know that you might be on antidepressants. They want, like they have all this information. If you're like a closet homosexual or something, they would know that. <laughs> They would know, like, that you're searching maybe online for, like, help with coming out of the closet, you know, stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, and I mean, obviously they didn't look at everybody's information, yeah. um, but if there was ever, like, a red flag thrown, they had access to all of that. Here's what their thing was. Here's what they said. They said um, they won't look at the information, but they have legal premises that if something comes up in the future to where you were a threat, then they have a backlog yeah. of information already Yep. that they can yep. refer to and be like, oh, look at this. We have all these records from forever. Right, and that's, I mean, in a sense, that's basically deeming every U.S. citizen as potential a potential terrorist. terrorist. You know, on this war on <laughs> terrorism that is so important to the United States yeah. today. So, yeah, we're a threat. Potential. We're a potential threat to the government. I, I'm a threat. You are a threat. We are all a threat. <laughs> Based on their actions, yes. Yeah. So they they weren't actually like listening to your phone calls. They're just collecting 
all this yes. metadata. They didn't actually yeah. have like yeah people riffling through data, your information, storing it in bulk. Yeah. Um, that they could you know have access to later on at any point down the road. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So anyways, June 7th rolls around. Uh, Obama stands behind the programs uh, FISA and PRISM, uh, assuring the United States citizens that they're controlled by the judiciary and U.S. Congress and that they are okay. <laughs> um, wow, okay, so Obama, at first, when this first is happening, it's released, it's leaked. Um, when was it leaked? Oh, um, like June 5th, and then June 7th, Obama yeah. backs it up. Yeah. Says they're legal. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's keep that in mind. Okay. And then uh, June 8th, uh, Snowden leaks the existence of a uh, proprietary NSA tool, the Boundless Informant, um, which independently can manage and analyze information. Uh, the information questions the official version of the PRISM's necessity and their method, their applied methods, uh, which were given by the U.S. government. So what that means to me is like they had a uh, NSA tool, the Balanced Informant, which pretty much I think they probably plugged in an algorithm and that just went and scanned through all your metadata, maybe searching yeah. keywords, key numbers. If you're in contact with this person, maybe there's yeah. one central person that is a potential threat and they look at the web of people he's talking to. Yeah. And yeah. if you talk to someone he's talked to, blah, 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 you're on a red flag list. Scanning, yep. scanning, scanning, analyzing. Yep, and it wasn't until uh, June 9th that Snowden actually revealed his identity. Okay, so that's four days um, after the official. Yeah, and release. that was uh, with a, an interview that was on television uh, by the Guardian. Oh, wow. um, it's you can you can watch it anywhere. I mean, it's posted everywhere. The actual video, um, and he was saying that you know. He revealed the data himself because he doesn't want to live in a world where everything is recorded. Um, I don't think anybody does. No, that's weird. <laughs> uh, so he said he wasn't going to go into hiding uh, because he, he ah. didn't think wrong. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I'm glad he's standing up for himself like that. Like he knows the government's going to come after him. Oh, but, definitely. But yeah. still, he, he mans up, says it. It's me. I did yeah. it. I knowingly did it, and because yeah. it is wrong. He kind of coined himself as a dead man, you know. Yeah. Uh, some of his claims, he's like, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to be here or, you know, and... That's wild. So. That um, is wild. So June 10th, he checks into Hong Kong hot at a hotel, um, pulled up there for a while, did another interview uh, with the South China Morning Post, um, and he claims that the U.S. government has been intruding through the Chinese digital network since 2009 so that brought like you know a whole different spectrum into play the u.s isn't only spying on its own people it's also oh, spying okay. on other countries yeah. um and you know at that point snowden didn't have any intention of leaving hong kong um but you know as as you know he later decided to go to russia Okay, so um, he's been in Hong Kong for, let's see, about a week, maybe two weeks here at this mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, and then um, June 14th, uh, the United Kingdom Home Office uh, basically issued a warning to all the airlines not to allow Snowden on board um, because they didn't want him, you know, to enter. The oh, <laughs> he's not allowed to enter the U.K., <laughs> Right. Weak, um, weak, UK, weak. <laughs> so uh, two days later, June 16th, The Guardian claims that the United Kingdom's GCHQ tapped foreign leaders' phone conversations during the 2009 G20 summit. Hmm. Um, you know, so... So the UK was in on tapping too? Yes, yeah. And that was that was a point that, like, Obama was really trying to uh, push hard was... Oh, oh, the U.S. isn't the only one that does this. Other Everyone's countries doing do this, it. and that's like that's like being a criminal and being like, "Oh, other people do it too." Yeah, you know, everyone else is robbing them. It's justifiable, you know. Everybody jumped off, or everybody went into the store and stole a candy bar, so <laughs> I did too. So it was yeah. fine. Um, <laughs> weak. That's weak. 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 Right. Uh, June twentieth rolls around. Uh, Guardian published an alleged U.S. court order that restricts NSA access to information as it collects. Or as it collected inadvertently without, you know, a warrant because 
that was you know the legal premise. Oh, was so legal, what they were doing? There was a um doc. There was a court case court that order. said that the yeah. NSA cannot actually do this, and they did it anyway. Yes. So they yeah. just ignored they collected it. Collected it without you know people's consent, and they needed a warrant to actually do that. So they just went out uh, and just did it. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Um, and then June 23rd uh, was when Snowden left Hong Kong, uh, went to Moscow, um, and he's been living there ever since. Um, Hong Kong government says that you know there's no legal basis to force his stay in Hong Kong, um, but it was really hard for him to travel because the U.S. revoked you know his passport and everything, so might make it extremely hard to travel if you don't have a passport. Yeah. <laughs> um, he was planning at first to go to a couple different uh, South American uh, countries, and uh, he hasn't, you know, gone anywhere yet. He was seeking asylum in, like I said earlier, I think like 30 different countries. Yeah. Um, Putin said that, you know, Snowden can stay in Russia you know, as long as he wants. Um as long as he doesn't continue to release information that could be yeah. detrimental to the U.S. Um, so at this point, I think Snowden really kind of just wants to get out of there so we can release more. Yeah. Seems like he wants um, to find a good, safe home base. And then uh, it seems like, yeah, like you said, he's got stuff to release that's going right. to be pretty yeah. pretty epic, epically insane. Right. And uh, the U.S. asked Russia to extradite um, Snowden and, you know, Putin – came out with a pretty, you know, harsh claim. <laughs> it's, it's something along the lines of, you know, Russia Russia doesn't send anybody out, or Russia doesn't give anybody up and never will, or yep. something along those lines, you know. Yep. Uh, something that, you'd, you know, you think of like a stereotypical Russian movie. Mother yeah. Russia. <laughs> uh, so that, you know, that's pretty cool, though. Um, but anyway, yeah, he's still basically holed up in an uh, airport terminal in Russia. Wow. Waiting to hear back from other countries, trying to find a place to go. So, yep. So, right um, now he's still alive, looking for somewhere safe to go. Has a ton of information, more to leak. Um, right. Still, he hasn't been pressed, char- charged with anything. Um, officially, hasn't right. been charged with anything. Well, I, I'm pretty sure that he was charged for espionage. That's what they want to, but I don't think he's officially been charged with a crime yet. No. Like, no. I'm not 100% Maybe sure. Maybe I'll look on that, that up. Okay. Yeah. Um, you looking that up right now? Yeah. Edward Stone not officially charged. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Um. Anyways, uh, <sighs> Glenn Greenwald. Um. Actually, there shows Okay. Glenn Greenwald, uh, one of the first journalists that broke the story about Snowden's information, a uh, direct quote from him, this just came out, said that uh, Snowden has enough information to cause more damage to the U.S. government in a minute alone than anyone else has ever had in the history of the United States. I didn't hear that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, Basically, yeah, keep, ta- uh, keep talking. Sit- you know, he has more, he could release information in, you know, a minute that would be more detrimental to the U.S. government than anything oh, else. Oh, okay, history. okay. Um, but Greenwald also said that that's not his goal. So, you know, I don't really know what Snowden has planned, but we'll see. Okay, so apparently here it says Snowden is charged with three federal crimes, theft of government property, unauthorized communication of national defense information. Mm-hmm. And willful communication of classified communications information with an unauthorized party. Mm-hmm. So it looks like he has. Okay, yeah. I was wrong on that. Yeah. And uh, other than trying to piece all the information, you know, from news outlets and stuff, that can be pretty confusing. Yeah. Um, I think it's also a shame that uh, a lot of the media outlets are continuing to focus um, on where Snowden is and what he's doing. And they were yeah, focusing on his girlfriend. Yeah, let's talk about that. How he sure. left his girlfriend. In, in, instead of the information that, you know, he actually revealed. That's weird. Um, I mean, like, why would they... Th- he just released the most, like, important information that's ever been leaked. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about his girlfriend. Right. And what he's doing. And, you know, it's just... 
I haven't seen anywhere where they actually talked about the information really? in depth from what he actually released. Have you been uh, looking a lot on media? I mean, have you watched a lot of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't. I haven't seen it too much. I've been pretty busy. I haven't worked, looked at any yeah. uh, actual mainstream media. RT News. Um, they went a little in depth with everything. RT News is always a great news source. Yep, for sure. Um, yeah, I saw I saw a headline of that, but I didn't actually see the uh, yeah. media themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, not even not even you know the news outlets just talking about the actual information that was released. Um, you know, they're also not asking any questions about um, the government's you know legality or constitutional premises behind this. Like, yeah. don't you think they should be questioning these programs? Yeah. <laughs> like that's that's the entire point of the media. Uh, it's free press. It is. You it know, is. It qu- makes you wonder. Authority. It's like why question are they not? Authority. Why are they not um, saying like these things? It's really right. strange. Instead, they're making it like a game of Where's Waldo. It's you like know, where's you know where's yeah, Snowden? Really. Where's Snowden? It's like the Kim Kardashians, the stuff they focus on. Mm-hmm. The girlfriend. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty weird that they're not. I mean. Uh, it, it goes to show you that the government has so much influence over what the media is saying. Like, the mm-hmm. purpose of the media is to be the polar opposite of the government. And now it's like there's nothing there to tell us what's actually happening. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't have an informed Except for public. Us. What's that? <laughs> Except <laughs> no. for us, John and Mason. Yeah, no, I mean, you can't have an informed public if you can't inform the people. Yeah, they're not... <laughs> It doesn't even make any sense. Yeah. And I mean, I think maybe later on, once everything's settled down a little bit, they might delve into, you know, some more of the legality and what yeah, the program hopefully. is actually doing. Um, but I mean, seriously, like, uh, they really need to refocus their attention on what actually matters. Yeah. It's like they're selling entertainment, what they're doing. They're using this as an opportunity to get viewers, it seems like. Right, like the threat of our civil liberties kind of seems more. I know Snowden leaving his girlfriend behind. Yeah, um. <laughs> is Edward Snowden a jackass coming up? <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, that's pretty sad. They should be talking about exactly what he leaked, the legality of what he did, the legality right. of what the government did. If the Patriot Act is legal, if that's a reli- like a reasonable thing to base. Uh, a spying program on is the Patriot Act, you know. All of the other stuff, completely insignificant. Shouldn't even be on a major news network. It has no business being on a news network. Well, um, I think some of it, you know, needs maybe, to be there. I mean, like maybe. Where could be he like, is and what he's doing. Oh, uh, yeah, some of that stuff. But. Should be, uh, when, when you talk about... Um, journalism, you're always taught of it's the upside-down pyramid basically think of it as that okay. the most important thing should be at the top and it should be the largest portion of text okay and it goes on down the pyramid until you get to just the little bits and pieces that are you know extra oh, okay and uh like my feeling on this is you know where he is and what he's doing in russia should really be at the bottom of that pyramid um and at the top the largest portion should be you know about the information. If this is legal yeah. um what's going on with the program yep the legality know. of everything yeah. that's happening should be at the top then definitely yeah. what what he's doing is interesting for sure because then it gives you insight into what the government thinks um yeah. you know and how scared scared other countries are you know, of what the government retaliation would be if they took him in there's a lot of information there mhm a lot and of it's, uh, I, Apparently, I mean, I haven't looked into it too much, but apparently, like, outside of the U.S., um, apparently, like, Germany and Egypt and Brazil, um, in their news and in their media, they're actually talking about the things that we should be talking about here, <laughs> the legality behind it. Yeah, I should look that you up. You know, everything like that. Um, um, Egypt was talking about the U.S. as a police state. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, Let's look at some... Uh, foreign quotes on Edward Snowden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was a few countries who had some pretty big slams against America. Mm-hmm. Can't remember which ones. All right. Foreign quotes on Edward Snowden. Uh, hmm. 
finding a lot of Edward Stone in quotes, not foreign quotes. No, I'm not really finding anything. Oh, here we go. BBC News. U.S. leaker Edward Snowden defending liberty. <laughs> Kabam. That's what I think, too. Um, I think that's definitely awesome. Bravo for him. Thank you for telling us. Seriously. That's that's a ballsy move. He he knows he could die, you know. Yeah. That's definitely a ballsy move, man. But in the same position, like, I don't think I could keep that under the wraps either. Mm-hmm. To be like, I, w- I wouldn't really feel like I had a choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know uh, <sighs> tough. France was one of the countries that, you know, told the U.S. to stop spying immediately. <laughs> um, and I guess they also said, I think they warned the European Union, you know, not to trade with us until we can prove that we're not, you know, surveilling other countries anymore. That's crazy. Um, but I doubt I doubt that'll happen, you know. Yeah. Trade's gonna continue yeah, regardless. It's too much. Yeah. But I mean I'm pretty sure we pissed off the entire world. <laughs> yeah. That's this, for sure. Yeah. Europe is furious, you know. Can't blame them though. Yeah, for sure. I would be furious too. I am furious, that sucks. <laughs> it's stupid. Alright, well, um, I think that pretty much does her. If any little things come out, we can just make up another video, you know. Yep. Yeah, throw some more information. So that is it, guys. A shift in perspective. Edward Snowden, what's going on with him? He's uh, still alive at this moment. He's on the run. <laughs> Has more info to release. He says it's going to be one of the most, or it was quoted as be, saying, a congressman said that it could be one of the most detrimental uh, releases of information in like the history of America, the one coming up bigger than the one he already released. So that's going to be very interesting to see what happens with that. Um, they're going to be trying hard to prevent that from happening, and uh, we'll see <laughs> see if they succeed or not. Yep. All right, guys. So uh, thank you for watching, John Brown, Mason Door. Take it off. See you guys.